Hello and thank you so much for joining us on Joy Asoye Live this beautiful evening. Thank you. Today on the program, we are moving the conversation to talk about the fuel subsidy as Nigerians continue to express mixed reaction following the announcement of the end of the subsidy regime. An attendant ripple effect, organized labor, pressure groups, civil rights organizations have kicked and even threatened a nationwide strike. They have even referred to it recently as a total and comprehensive uh, industrial strike action. However, one thing is certain. Most of them agree that subsidy payment is no longer sustainable, but the swift announcement and implementation did not all go well with them as nothing was indeed on the ground ready for Nigerians. To discuss the attendant ripple effect of the removal of fuel subsidy and the stance of the Inter-Party Advisory Council of Nigeria uh, that just had recently a press conference, we have Prince Chinedu Obi, the DG of IPAC. Thank you so much for being with us this evening. Thank you, Joy, for inviting me. Thank it's, you, Nigerians. It, it's a pleasure. We'll go for a very short break right now. When we return, we will go into the matter at hand, fuel subsidy. How is it biting at you? We'll be right back after this. Welcome back from that short break. So, uh, Prince Chinedwobi, Director General, Inter-Party Advisory Council of Nigeria. I mean, the IPAC had a press conference recently, uh, one that I attended as a matter of fact. But if you can just give uh, Nigerians a background as to where they stand. I mean, the cluster of uh, party members that were there, I know it wasn't the complete 18. Uh, what was that agreement that, that you had? Uh, once again, thank you for inviting me to the program. Uh, my reservation is that I am not the spokesperson of the Inter-Party Advisory Council. I am also not the national chairman. I'm just an the administrator, director the director general. general. Mm -hmm. However, uh, I can express my opinion publicly. And then I can only quote, maybe uh, making a reference to the position of the chairman during the press conference you talked about mm -hmm. uh, that that's, can be more that, acceptable. That, that, that is acceptable um, otherwise any other thing i say is my opinion right well uh at the press conference you attended of course party officers came first there was a general assembly before the the press conference the general assembly aggregated thoughts of party members and of course the product of what you saw in the press conference is is, is a product of uh, the, the the opinion of of party members across the 18 political parties now most political parties ahead of elections had had all hammered over and over that the fuel subsidy regime was not sustainable and had to leave so what is different now the president uh, president bola tinubu has emerged and indeed done just that remove this fuel subsidy? Truth is that fuel subsidy is not sustainable, particularly in the manner it's been operated in the last few years in Nigeria. There's a trust deficit, you know, between Nigerians and our government. Nigerians feel, you know, perception is very important. You know, Nigerians feel that there's a, l a high scale uh, corruption within the subsidy system. But otherwise, subsidy is a global strategy to deal with issues around market forces, where local, the local economy is competing with the global economy. And sometimes the shocks uh, make it difficult for the local economy to compete favorably, particularly the persons whose incomes are not the average income. You know, a country like Nigeria, for instance, based on the statistics of MB, uh, Nigerian Bureau of Statistics for last year, discovered that you have 133 million Nigerians mm. with what they called multidimensional multi poverty. With that kind of scale, subsidy is the only way you can make sure that people can move from one place to the other. Uh, subsidy has been tried not only in the petroleum, you know, 
periods in this country you have subsidy on education, subsidy on health, mm -hmm. and so on. And like I said, that's the only way you can carry the average person along. But the question is, is it sustainable? With the amount of money that was spent in the last few years, no government can sustain that level of subsidy. What a lot of persons are saying, uh, which is actually maybe a product of that uh, conference, is that the timing, you know, what everyone is unanimous, including those who I guess subsidy, is that it is not sustainable. It's a big elephant in the room that has to be dealt with. Of course. You know, so uh, timing is what a lot of persons, including me personally, think is something we needed to deal with. Drop a timetable that we can anticipate it, you know, begin to adjust to, to it. Mm -hmm. If you were planning to buy a big car, you can now decide to buy a bicycle and so on. Find measures that can help you survive the, the removal, trend. But right. uh, the government need to use the monies that they spend in, if you like, dealing with subsidy to grow other sectors like our infrastructure and other sectors that we will we'll, we'll get to we will get to the timing and uh, the infrastructure or palliatives or whatever cushioning effect the government should have put in place however you had said that the concept of subsidy in itself is not a bad thing per se it's to alleviate the suffering on nigerians having seen the nigerian scene what is it possible that without removing, total removing uh, the, the subsidy payment, Nigeria could have sanity around it and uh, more accountability. I, I think so. W what I, uh, first of all, let's even, uh, you know, commend the courage of Balatinibu, particularly within the kind of political space we have now, with kind of tension in the country for a leader, to come and uh, see how we remove subsidy, something most of us have to commend the courage because the truth about the matter is, it's mm. like a bitter pill that we need to take. Uh, but like I said, the management of it is where we would have been a little bit uh, careful in the terms of realizing that the poverty level of the country now, with the consequence of a removal of, cons uh, if you were buying for before for instance you fill your tax at fifteen thousand today you'll be doing that at approximately forty five thousand exactly now the minimum wage in this country as of today is thirty thousand mm naira -hmm. now assuming a thirty thousand naira person cannot afford to buy a car he will need to transit from wherever he lives to where he works that in today's situation is impracticable you can't deal with it because by the time he pays an average of one thousand a day for 30 days he will have nothing to take home so he might not even be able to sustain 30 that's correct now, for 30 days that's that's the challenge with him, which is why i thought that a phase plan mm. where first of all we deal with the issues of corruption around the subsidy that i talked about the volume of money we'll pay on subsidy and which is increasingly uh if you like increasing is something I think that if it's properly audited and managed, we may not have that level of uh, money going into subsidies. So if we had dealt first with the issue of the corruption perception, and Nigerians know that the new government is dealing with corruption, then we would have dealt with that uh, the trust deficit to a point that you can have people actually now realize that the, 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 new, the new government means well mm -hmm. for the people. How would this have been achieved? Because uh, these are people or people in that sector who have been enjoying for so long, enjoying the, the largesse from this subsidy payment, some of which cannot be accounted for. And uh, the, the, the quantum stupendous numbers they give us as the number of um, Nigerians, uh, the, the consumption of fuel in Nigeria is cannot be real that's that for one so how if you were a government that wanted to bring sanity to that what would have been your first step as to ensuring this person pays for a, the country is a paying for exactly what it consumes I, I would have preferred what i might call a reverse engineering start by reversing whatever it is that the average nigerian 
gets surprised or shocked when he hears subsidy. So things as sanitizing the payment system, uh, making it more transparent so that Nigerians will know actually. I, and I can tell you, most of the money spent on, uh, on subsidy is paid for neighboring countries. What these guys do is, in fact, sometimes you, you find that some of the trucks that claims are made didn't even enter the country. Just go straight to go the so neighboring countries. If the government has started with dealing with that, and we know that this country actually pays this social amount in real terms for subsidy, you would have started building the mindset of Nigerians to accept whatever you're going to do. And then create uh, some sort of palliative system that can start dealing with your day-to-day -day challenges. Right. My wife is a master's student in Canada. By flashing her ID card, she doesn't Gets pay for transport. transport. So those are the kind of things that if we are put in place and you, you were talking about removal of subsidies, those shocks would have been fine. So for me, when we're talking about not being timely, that we had expected those kind of small, small programs, palliative mm. programs that can take care of the shock so that people don't just <laughs> enter depression. Because that's the kind of thing you might find in the kind of situation we have today when, for instance, F by my one of my staff was telling me today that look if i don't get a salary increase by the end of this month i'll be unable to come to work mm, and that's not uh, isolated to your organization now the past administration had removed field subsidy it was not a uh, um, part of the the the, the bill or the budget rather uh, uh, it, it from june from june yes half of the year and we didn't see people kick in fact, if anything, we, it, what was more amplified and loud seemed to be the $800 billion, uh, million dollars that was uh, borrowed uh, um, uh, by the past administration. Why do you think it is now? There are speculations uh, that those descending voices have opposition, largely opposition, who feel aggrieved that they didn't win. And not necessarily the fact that fuel subsidy payment has stopped i you know for those who wear the shoe they feel the pain mm. i don't think anyone who is shouting today is necessarily an opposition party ipac for instance is not an opposition party it's a conglomerate of all the political parties so each time ipac talks it's non-partisan it is patriotic it's any statement coming from ipac is meant to deepen democracy because Everybody's in the room. It's not an opposition political party. And which is why I pack first acknowledge the fact that this is the way to go. We can't. Exactly. The subsidy is not sustainable. However, I, the timing was important. I personally thought that uh, when uh, we had issues of uh, appropriation for June, that it would have terminated at the end of June. Now, I personally would have respected a situation where in that pronouncement his excellency would say uh like in this budget at the end of the june there's no subsidy we shall do this do this between now and end of june where that's the kind of time mean that we're talking about so that people will begin to prepare for it and activities will be put in place part of it is consultation with stakeholders Maybe a TUC and ECU might not be complaining as they are now complaining because I think it's the abrupt, abrupt decision that is actually making everyone kick, not necessarily opposition. I don't think uh, every economist will tell you that the best way to run an economy is to allow market forces to determine, you know, the challenge now, like I said before, which is actually the strategy for subsidy is that all of us cannot, you know, but we have to find a way to take care of that. And once it's transparent, there's nothing wrong with subsidy removal. Of course, there's there's nothing wrong <coughs> with subsidy removal. Uh, in the justification of that 800 million that was borrowed, the, 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 the spread, I don't know if you saw that spread, 5,000 naira was to be given to a f a 10 million household. Is that a ki the kind of palliative you would want? Uh, that, that's... That, that's takes me like uh, the trader money that, where uh, people yes, were exactly sharing money. Sharing money. Monies you give without value for me is like throwing it throw money exactly. away. Uh, I don't think that that's a good strategy to talk about palliative. 
what is the statistics? Who's, who has the record? What profile do we have around who benefits and who does not benefit? During COVID in the US, for instance, American society knew the number of persons in each house, the demographics, mm -hmm. you know, who is a baby. And every day people were waking up, seeing food dropped in line with what they required. Do we have that kind of statistics here? Yeah. The answer is no. So I think the kind of measure that would speak to everyone is the one that speaks to infrastructure, like transportation, health, those things that would cost me money. I find that government is providing for it and not just dashing people for 5,000. Then in today's buying ability, what would 5,000 do? You can't even prepare a plate of food for the family. So that, uh, I don't think that that 800, uh, that's part of the things I thought the National Assembly should not have even approved in the first instance. You know, mm. uh, That's one of my quarry with the Ninth Assembly. The, the, if I was in the Ninth Assembly, I would, that would not pass. Really? True. Why do you think there was that that uh, acceptance, general acceptance, is, we didn't see lots of people speak very loudly against against it or that any other loans that we were taken we that Nigerians saw with um, a pinch of we, salt. We entered a regime of continued borrowing and it became a cultural thing. At one point I was wondering whether those giving us this money really do profiling because it's only gamblers that will throw their money around without looking at. Because the question I always ask, that volume of borrowing, can you fuel them in terms of fiscal infrastructure in Nigeria? My answer is no. But if you are servicing the loans as at when due? Uh, if you borrowed to put in, in you know, productive and regenerative uh, ventures, for me, that would have worked. But if you borrow for things like you want to pay people 5,000 naira, I don't think... Prince, uh, I mean, yeah. Prince, if you are a lender and, you, and, and you're sure that this person pays his bills, pays his, you won't care again what they're doing using for it. You just make the loans available okay. because they're no, interested yeah, in it. That's actually one of my uh, conspiracies around all these foreign borrowing. Sometimes they don't do it in the interest of the recipient. They exactly. do it in their personal interest. And mm -hmm. which is why I think that those who go for such loans should consider the, how it affects the country. Because the bank giving you the money wants to make more money. So mm -hmm. it doesn't care whether your people are okay with it or not. Somebody did an analysis of out of the 44 point something trillion dollars that Nigeria is is owing uh, if you have to give it to, to everybody say we have 200 million if each but everybody will be owing about 300,000 and when the person looked at me and say by the way you're owing about 300,000 naira I just had to really laugh mm. but uh, the president came on and came on strong against uh, fuel subsidy and the removal and you and I have seen how that happened if you for somebody who's who wants to get that away from his administration how would you have advised him to to go about it what are those proper palliatives that he should have have done who are those stakeholders like you said earlier that he should have have consulted first what and how long do you think all this would have taken if he want, really wanted to do it and do it right because like my village people will say that die that we want to die next next month. Why not now? Never we start to die and now and get it over <laughs> with. So what, what would have been Which your Which is why plan? I, I said to you, I respect the courage of the president to take that position now. However, uh, if we have to die, let's die a good death rather than... Just die. This is strangulating. Strangulating. I, my attitude to it would have been a gradual movement you 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 begin to you know when someone is going to shoot you and it's gradual mm. you begin to you know get psychologically tuned to the pain then abrupt pain you know i i think uh, if i were the president and who also told us he's going to be a respecter of rule of law the PIA actually allows him to do that. Exactly. Uh, the Appropriation Act also allows him to because there's no appropriation for, for So, really? legally speaking, he has no more. But I would have said hide under that one month gap between 31st May when NNPC adjusted his meter to 30th June when I should have said it ended. Within that period, consultation, NLC, TUC, all the relevant organs, the state government, the local government, everyone, Nigerians will know, look, and while you're doing that, create inquiries, 
I think that NNPC needs to go through forensics. Yes, but, but, but before we go into the NNPC forensics, for some of us who watched, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you were, in, were sitting beside the president uh, during that, in his inauguration. Some of us had to watch um, uh, uh, via the TV. However, do you think he had the intention for an immediate removal since we still had in our in my myopic head we had till june and i thought he had one month to reel out plans and 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 all of that but for the adjustments that leaked according to the nnpcl it wasn't supposed to be public knowledge however they adjusted their pump uh, their their uh, pump pump prices and that affected everything do you think the president intended it to be immediate Inugra's speech is a very important speech. Of course. If you want to reach a president or a governor, you start first with what did he say he's going to do the first day. So the president was quite categorical that this will end. From the civil servant perspective, that's like a policy statement of government. You know, but I had expected that the civil servants would have said, okay, even though the president has said this, the law still can take this to target. But is that impunity of you know practice which most of us have seen over time otherwise i would not think that maybe the president why from campaign you remember almost all the presidential candidates, candidates of the front line wanted to say we'll remove it you know uh peter b was categorical from the first day you know with that you can say the president means uh, but then there's a law that we need to be which is the appropriation that had put that till the end of june I should have thought that an NPC would have been calm enough to allow that to run till the end of June. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure this noise may not have exactly. Been there. You know, yes, it will be painful. Like you said, they die they, would, they need to die tomorrow, they can die today. But of course, you would have had quite some planning around it. What month is enough time to put in place certain measures? You know. Or tell me in the first instance, and this is actually my challenge. Why would Nigeria have issues with petroleum when we have uh, <laughs> natural uh, uh, crude. Uh, crude in our country? It's just a case of a man who lives by the ocean and he can't drink of water. I feel offended that this time and age, Nigeria cannot produce petroleum products locally. One man, Dangote, a business on one man. I'm not sure Dangote whole network is up to 10% of our budget in three years. So how come one man can build a refinery, mm. but ours can work? I should think that if our government over the years wanted to solve this problem, modular refineries in, not on these large scale refineries. Mm. For modular me, that would just service maybe two states, three states at a time. One state, make small ones in California and small areas, just small, small refineries. And that can produce, and serve the local market if we had done that consistently if if that's actually where all these so-called borings are channeled by now we can i should think that uh we won't be worried about the cost of petroleum because it would have been at the cheapest you know so uh, it's, the healthy it's, competition that would have been in the that's sector. correct that's correct so i think over time uh, uh previous governments have not been responsible to issues of uh, you know and i think if this government would need to depart from that they can, from the first day, begin to do things differently. First, build our confidence to know that it's because, the, like I said, the problem is trust deficit. Nigerians don't trust government again because they've been fooled many times. And uh, each time anyone comes, the first impression is that they have come again. But uh, let's let's see how we're able to move into the new regime. Why uh, do you think the past administration did not remove fuel subsidy, having signed uh, the PI? PIB, PI, be, becoming PIA, uh, uh, Petroleum Industry Act, and, and all of that. In fact, they had everything ready for f subsidy removal, if you ask me. But uh, why do you think Muhammad we, Buhari we, didn't? We play a lot of politics with economics in Nigeria. If you remember, the same people who were demonstrating against Jonathan's government, you know, ah, that if you can't remove first subsidy. Are the ones who are telling us today 
you know, is, is that politics side that people have not been able to separate between politics and what is really economics, you know? So, and sometimes people want to also look good, uh, which is why I said I commend the president that will say, let's do this, and do you know, and not it, right. and because all this while, and again, I'm also sure that some people benefit from the corruption and don't think it should end. Otherwise, if we were sincere about removing subsidy, we would have done it. In, during the seventh or sixth assembly, a group I consulted for the initiative, group of legislators in the National Assembly, took the courage to discuss the regulation for the first time. And that program came out with non-state act, non actors who came out looking at it from the numbers and said, we need to remove this. I thought that the government would have taken advantage of that. Then, yeah. And it came out with a lot of recommendation of what needs to be done. Between then and now, Nigeria would have been out of the thing called subsidy. Okay, the Prince Chinedwobi, let's go for a short break and return to discuss more. We'll be right back after this. If you are just joining us, this is still Joy Asayan live here on Kafta and Television. I will be discussing the subsidy removal and how it's been biting on Nigerians. I will be discussing all of this with Prince Chinedu Obi, Director General, Inter-Party Advisory Council of Nigeria, IPAC. Okay, so Prince, we are seeing, we are seeing the NLC, that's the Nigerian Labour Congress. We are seeing pressure groups, civil rights organizations are threatening to join the proposed strike from Wednesday. I even had, I just read the reports uh, before we came on air right now that even the Nigerian Union of Journalists are joining that, that strike. So you're going to shut the studios. I'm not sure what it entails. <laughs> At the moment, I'm not sure what it entails. However, we are seeing all this solidarity uh, strike action. However, is that the right way to go? Is, is it, is, has it ever been productive? Well, uh, like I said, uh, when you flog a child, you expect the child to, to weep. cry, of course. That's exactly, uh, the, the, from the perspective of NLC and every other person, mm -hmm. including, the, the TUC. including the rich, who instead of paying 15000 everybody's worried about it. Uh, but what I would uh, appeal to every Nigerian, uh, the NLC, TUC, is that why we do that let's look at the larger picture you know uh once we're able to get the government to provide palliatives incentives that can cushion the effect mm. i think uh this is the way to go but uh i also think if government can this is my personal opinion can allowed allow the 30 days period between first to happen so that within this period the necessary consultation we're talking about i'm sure if any uh, nlc tuc and all that were carried along from the beginning to know that in 30 days we're going to do this probably there won't be need in the first place for these agitations but what they're doing is normal for every uh, as a student but has it ever worked as a student i was an activist so i remember I when they increase imagine. anything we, uh, you, you still you still you know, sound sometimes like an activist know, yeah well uh, you know once the soldier is always a soldier <laughs> so but, 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 but from but that perspective i right. think uh, uh they are speaking in the interest of the large masses that way though but i will appeal to them to also see it from two sides both the government and the uh, uh, nlc should be patriotic to know what is in the best interest of the country. Well, I know. read I read uh, the, the statement by the Trade Union uh, Congress where they are asking for the reversal. The pump price should go back to status quo uh, until several things are uh, uh, in, in place. While that is commendable so that Nigerians can have the breather and gradually seep into the new reality, is it something you see with the body language of the president? Is it something you see him uh, resolving to? 
I'm not the spokesperson of the president. However, and just like body you. languages can also deceive you. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you saw that you video know. where he said you would protest and protest, and I would not agree with you. <laughs> I would still remove subsidy. <laughs> Did you see that video? Yeah, I saw that video. When I saw <laughs> that video, and I was like, okay, we we asked for this, so <laughs> you know, if we ask for this and this year, what will you do? But my attitude to this is, both the president and NLC should look at it from two sides of the coin you know uh president seeing it from the man at the driver's seat now there's an old saying that said the way the driver sees the road is different, different from, from the way the passenger, passenger sees exactly. it uh, yeah. but you know from the masses perspective it's biting it I've is. Never, i can't remember when i bought Forty-five thousand naira for a car that will last yes, for three Prince, days. Prince Each time I remember Prince it, you I, cannot I, complain. But you see the challenge. Between you and I, you cannot complain. You cannot. If complain. I'm complaining, so I can imagine what the average Nigerian is facing. Right. And which is the perspective I said, the president should look at it from two sides, and the NLC two should also see it from the side where the president is coming, so that we can have a meeting point where both parties will go back you you, you have know. been very very intentional in not responding to my question do you think the strike action will work stifling economic activities are across the country i i i am not a supporter of extreme measures for everything i am in my negotiation i like a win-win you can see that's why i want to stay at the point of center the worker has a right to you know yeah. strike you know but i'm saying within that right you just so see the need not to put us in more serious crisis the president should also realize that look good intention like everybody's unanimous that this is something we need to do can we build the confidence of those who are going through this stress in such a way they can understand that look this intention is it's meant to right. you know get a better society for us so a win-win situation some sort Okay, so the minimum wage increment that is uh, part of their demands, while it is completely apt, if you ask me, minimum wage is, is, is long overdue, it's no longer sustainable. If you look at uh, the, the economic realities of Nigeria and the purchasing power of an average Nigerian, however, is it something you think would also cushion the effect of this um, I, subsidy I, removal? Joy, I, I've been wondering how people survive with 30,000 naira the so-called minimum wage that is and not somebody even in some states. told me that many nigerians receive as little as fifteen thousand naira. and on a serious check i realized that people actually pay fifteen thousand it's criminal in today's nigeria reality the least you can pay anyone the least could be a hundred thousand and should, you now know that the person thousand. will be struggling to survive with it go to the market these things come with inflation. By this time last year, bread was as little as 300 naira. Bread, 1,200 today. Maybe with this increase, now it will be 1,500. Exactly. How do a man that receives 100,000 naira, I'm not even talking about 30,000 because that one is criminal, how does the person survive? So, why I think the presidency needs to look at this quickly is that, you know, people have different ways of reacting to the situation. This might increase criminality. Mm. You know, some people commit crime not because they want to commit crime push push factors that can make you do what you wouldn't want to do so let's 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 you know where the thinking cap that would make us not see it from one side of the coin so how fast do you think how expedient should this minimum minimum wage re review yesterday <laughs> yesterday i should have known that was coming <laughs> that's the answer yes you know yesterday uh, honestly because uh i just talked about hundred thousand the moment i said one thousand inside my head i was processing what hundred thousand can, can buy. even buy someone who lives in fct you know i don't know the part of fct where you get accommodation for one hundred thousand a month i don't know the part of fct the kind of accommodation you're going to find be in the first so these are realities that we need to deal with if we need to also deal with corruption you give a policeman a gun to protect us and his salary is unable to take him home how do you think on his way home he might decide to and you giving him a gun so let's 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 be realistic about this you know you might talk about the inflation that an increase will cost but 
we think we need to wear a thinking cap as to how to get out of this quickly. Right. Yes. And as as for the transportation sector, what what, what what's your suggestion there? Transportation sector, I just told you about how by flashing your ID card, you don't even pay. I should think more money would be invested in vehicles that consume less fuel, mm. that can carry more people. So that as part of palliative, once you can flash your card as a worker, you enter a bus, you don't pay. That's possible in Nigeria. I just said to you, in some climes, it's possible. So if if we keep making reference, we borrow this from there, why can't we do welfare issues the same way it's done other, in other countries? Why is, can't we? It's a question I would like you to answer. Uh, why, why can't we? Because the social welfare packages of the past administration, in my opinion, failed woefully. I do not think it, it had that impact, economic impact, on the number of Nigerians they had projected that it will have on. I don't know what your opinion is. However, it seems like in, an, in, in a, a situation where we don't even have data, it's, it's not just about going to a market and distributing 5,000 Naira to people whose names you do not know. That does not sound intelligent and sustainable for me. However, how can we achieve this constructive palliative where everybody is known everybody is gets what he deserves and all of that i mean we've also said I, I i spoke with somebody earlier today who said um in justifying the 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 complex the utc uh, complex where the printing hub happens that in the utc you can clone any id card whatsoever any id card so for such your your advice what what you just suggested for it to work it has to be one that maybe would you you scan it come in it has a database that says indeed this is a government staff this person works here and all of that but we aren't even there yet no a every problem has a solution once you can identify a problem the next is to find a solution if we have bosses and are telling these non uh, uh persons who are not designated to use it are using it we can use if you deploy ICT to it uh if you, you can clone biometrics for instance right you know you clock in just clocking your hand on the bus if he recognizes you you're going but part of our challenge is that over the years we've not really maintained a real database that profiles everyone that can first even tell you the number of persons now check the last government said they were going to uh take 100 100 million people out of poverty right yes now if we agree with the projected Nigerian uh, number, which mm, is 200 million yes. approximately, if you take 100 uh, people out of it, meaning that 100 people mm. have been taken out, so we would have only had 100, and, uh, 100 million. Maybe plus. We plus. don't know how many. Of course, have. before, uh, if you are taking people out of poverty, you won't take rich people out of poverty, right? So mm -hmm. maybe let us say then we have 70% of our population poor, right? Mm -hmm. If you do the mathematics very well, maybe that would have taken what, one, 140 something. Right. Now, does it not match the MB? see statistics, statistics of, of what is the national 133 133 so somebody is not telling us the facts mm. so my point exactly so it is that's actually the problem with our policies someone tells I, I want to do trader money and you go to the market sharing money to people to whom in we how do we take who, what's even guaranteed the person you're paying the money to is a nigerian could have been a nigerian a chadian a ghanian that so works into the that market. person actually does need then how do you do exactly so we have been misplacing our priorities we've been putting monies in the wrong areas you know and going forward and which is what i expect nigerians to do when we discuss nigerian economy let's take politics away from it but really is that possible that's the challenge it is the, 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 the we're politics very, away from we, economic we put policies. politics in front of so many things mm -hmm. otherwise if we're patriotically looking at some of these things that's what we can now know uh take decisions that even though no one is clapping for us today over time we can begin to see the result if for instance in the next one month even as we struggle with this remover and we can see that things are changing in nigeria and those who said yes yesterday can say no and vice versa exactly mm. so uh, at this point it is even more dire and expedient to ensure that these things start working unfortunately the president's cabinet is not formed now it's not because um he's doing anything wrong per se yeah. i mean he just emerged president that's correct however 
do you think it would it would even slow things down he doesn't have ministers just yet his cabinet is not formed it, everything is just really sparse uh that's actually part of what we thought uh should have been put in place before we talk about removal so that you have people with the responsibility to deal with the shocks that will come out of it but of course uh if you want to be fair to the president he's still uh he doesn't even have the National Assembly he to have a, deal with. The, the Ninth Assembly is exactly. almost gone. The Tenth Assembly will be proclaimed around the 13th of June. Of June. Uh, so even if he has his list, and again, the law has even also allowed him under 60, 60 days to do days, that. Exactly. So we can't blame him for that. If there's anything I thought would have been done properly, is that would have seen how we're able to manage all this within the period of the 30 days, so days, that right. would have created new would ministers, that have been sufficient new though? officials maybe we're not we're not doing it now so we, we cannot assume that they won't hypothetically speaking we, if, yeah, we had exactly. 30 days, if we had 30 days would it, something would have been sufficient or different. he would have needed if, to if we to can wake up one morning and take a fast decision is already in place how about 30 days would have been ample so if an npc can swiftly with just a pronouncement change the meters across nigeria how about then the 30 days would have been too would have been ample Mm. Mm. Would you think this will make him expedite, expedite action on getting his cabinet set? And would it affect the quality of people that emerge eventually in, do, in key positions? I don't think so. Uh, the president has been aspiring to be president. He said he's a life ambition. Oh, please, uh, let's not go there. No, 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 no. So if that's correct, that, if this if that's that, correct I expect him to mm. know who to place where and how you know issue of forming a cabinet if will not be a set problem precedence by the fact that the president had always wanted to be president and so he should form his cabinet easily mm. the past administration it took him six months uh having contested for several years two persons in the same situation can act differently, differently of course so i uh, i don't expect because the last administration waited about six months right six before months. he formed his government i don't expect this government to uh do that you know yeah in the widest of my imagination i don't think i have a very strong feeling that this government is already willing to work you know like i said if a man has aspired over the years to be president i don't want him to think twice about every step he's going to take and let's see how that unravels in the next in the coming days but i'm optimistic that it won't take the kind of time that we had in the last administration Okay, so with everything that, that happened in his emergence as, as president, uh, there was, the, the, in fact, the, there's still a legal torso uh, contesting his elections. Do you think that um, generally we will see Nigerians warm up to him better? Because even in his uh, acceptance speech, he talked about the many people that didn't uh, vote for him. Of course, that's natural. And he extended the olive branch to to others who didn't. But do you see that cohesion in governance? Do you see that he can unite Nigeria? Yes, he can unite Nigeria. I, I don't like talking about when the matter is in court. Uh, I, I like to allow the court to decide the position. Mm. You know, one fact you can't take away today is that there's a president that has been sworn in. Uh, whatever happens is now within the courts to decide whether uh, that's in tandem with what Nigerians ask for or not. Uh, you and I cannot, don't have the jurisdiction mm. to discuss H that. However, the, the, the cohesion in governance, that yes, unity uh, necessary. But mine is for as long as it lasts, even if a man has a day to act as president. He's been president for close to a week now. I expect him to do whatever that is needful, yes, okay. whatever it is that would build confidence do, whatever it thinks that would galvanize, you know, build more solidarity and get people believe. I should expect if I were to be his advisor, those are the kind of things I would ask him to do. With the removal of subsidy, the announcement of the removal of subsidy and uh, the planned strike, where do you think his ratings are in Nigerians' hearts? <laughs> because that's a tough one to come into, you know, into governance they, they, and yeah you see uh i'm one of those who also believe that leadership is not uh is a bundle of responsibility mm, it's not it's a walk not, in the it's park. not a title and yeah you know uh, who was it that said if you 
leadership is about making people happy you go and sell ice cream you know yeah. but uh that would be in the sense that you are determined to get something done patriotically selflessly not without any ulterior motive mm -hmm. that the end will justify the means and not you know like i said to you the trust deficit makes it difficult for us to differentiate between what we were told yesterday and what someone is telling us today so a leader who wants to leave a legacy should be able to do things you know patriotically not minding whether for national the interest right. is right or not and then let the end justify the means if this administration lasts four years one month two weeks whenever well how long uh it, it lasts and nigerians can make reference to it there was a certain nigerian president aspiring president that wanted to be present even if for one day i think it was a war that wanted to be present even if for one if day. just for a day be for a day so it's not about how long it lasts it's what one can do with every second you know uh, i want to see a movement from the regime of corruption you know i had said before that what we tried to do before was shutting the window of corruption and opening the doors wide that was my interpretation of what because what happened really the kind of monies that and we I like the analogy that, here uh, shutting know. the windows and, and opening, opening the, door. the doors that's my impression of it because you if you hear the sums of monies that went through the system what i always ask myself where is this money yet we still have a lot of poor nigerians and more in the number so if the new government can on the daily basis build the confidence of nigerians by what they do the programs they run leakages they block like i talked about this subsidy regime can we do a forensic analysis of what actually happened because if you can't know what went wrong you can't put Fe it exactly. right you can't fix it then the law enforcement agencies that need to punish offenders should also be strengthened to do their work you know from the police icpc fcc code of conduct they should be empowered to do the job so that those who have kept us in this situation should pay for it so that we can achieve some level of deterrence hmm. That's interesting because some of us had witness in this country where um, bad fuel was imp imported back here at ethanol. I'm not sure the proper the proper word for it, but it destroyed vehicles and nobody was punished for it. So it when it comes to the petroleum and the syndicates and the many the many branches around it, it is difficult to see justice or prosecutions as it should be in that sector. But moving forward now, the NNPCL. Uh, is a limited liability company now and then there is that competition among other importers very soon there should not be sole importers of the product so what do you envisage the that's the era many of us are look up to where uh competition will bring you know the best out of anyone Everyone. uh if nnpc was not a sole at one point it became a regulator and operator and you know what, what happens when you become a, a regulator and, and you become the referee and the, the judge and jury ju judge and jury that's what we've been having but now if you create a situation of competition that they, they, that's where the, even the idea of market forces would people who are not strong would learn will go and assume it exactly you know because uh, i think that's the regime we should all uh, uh aspire to have so that we can move away from this laxity and the incompetence that's all over an the ineptitude place. that goes on all over the place mm. the painful part is that on they are not punished if a chief executive finds that a nigerian citizen is killed somewhere and some people are meant to pay for it the man in charge of security within that environment loses his job the next man coming on board will not like anybody to be slapped but if i know that we will be celebrating oh thank god not up to one million people died and uh, because we have a way of thanking god yeah, for, everything. for everything oh, thank yeah. god that it's not everybody that died joe in this country an american citizen was kidnapped kidnapped in niger state within 24 hours they came rescued the person 
if you didn't have patriotism and that happened to you, you would develop it. Mm. But when you're in, you're in a country where a governor's convoy will be attacked, Governor Zulu many times almost has kept yes, death in yes, exactly. Zamfara State. And some people are paid to be in charge of security within that area. Mm. And nobody was sacked. I'm afraid many Nobody more. had to resign. Like Nobody even so resigned. Yes. Nobody no, resigned to, to say... say I am, I am ashamed that I could not Let's take away the one of his relations. He's not African. I've never seen how many <laughs> Africans that have resigned because they are not doing well. But the man who oversees, because for me, one of the best ways to get people to act is to show supervisory role. Punish when you need to punish. Mm. Discipline when you need to discipline. And reward when you need to reward. I mean, let's Somebody have some done very well. Here and reward. There. Don't poorly. Suck. And... Just like what happened to you, remember during the last election, someone declared uh, uh, a wreck, declared uh, a result when he's not the proper person to do it. Even the agency that he represents went after him. Exactly. If we do that often in this country, I'm sure the impunity will stop. Or maybe it's the outcry that uh, made that agency Whatever go it is. after Whatever him. Maybe it is. the Nigerian it is the population outcry. should do more. Whatever is like, maybe Nigerians should start crying so that we see whether we can get agencies to work. Right. Mm -hmm. I must thank you for spending this hour uh, with me, Prince Chinedu Obi, Director General, Interparty Advisory Council of Nigeria, IPAC. It's been a wonderful, inciting uh, conversation. Thank you, there. Okay, so this is where we pull the curtains on Joy Asoye Live today. Do have a wonderful evening and be rest assured we'll be back tomorrow with so much more. Have a wonderful evening. <laughs>